The next technique is called filtered bank multi-carrier, FBMC. Now, this one goes one step ahead and it applies the filter not to the sub-band, but applies the filter to every carrier. So this is one carrier and it will filter out everything that is not in the main this one. After that, all of these are filtered out. This thick blue line is the filter. So from the sub band, we will need, let's say there are three sub bands, we will need three filters. For this one, if there are 1024 sub carriers, we will need 1024 filters. Right? So kind of difficult. But this is why it's called filtered bank. The bank means you know, it's a group of filters. But once you have done that, now you can, um, so there's no side lobes, basically no cyclic prefix is needed. So what you have done is now because you are not going to get any reflection or whatever it is. So basically no side is needed. You can have more bits per hurdle and different users can have different sub bands with different parameters. Now, so we can combine this with the sub band technology which was before. So again, we have three sub bands here. Red, blue, and it doesn't look like green, but we have three sub bands with three different parameters and with uh, three different, um, basically, I mean, what it is is that now we don't need the band filter because every carrier is filtered, so we can be next to each other. Yeah. Um, why doesn't all this stuff mean the information? Because we didn't know this. These are all papers that are coming out in after the previous generation, 2011, is the first paper that appeared. My question is more like, is it, is it the theory wasn't there or because it's too costly? No, no, it's the theory was not there. All this is new theory. And it's still too costly to implement, by the way. I mean, that is being studied. The implementation is being studied. For example, you can see that this will be probably very costly to implement. So, right now, for academics, cost is not the key, right? Academics are just coming out with these ideas and, and they are being you know, experimented with. Yeah, so this is not something that was known before. Yeah. And also, I know that designing the paper is very really so hard. Yeah, too hard, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, so, so the thing is, it doesn't take too much to write a paper on it, and these papers are there and people are discussing, but, but having said that, the list that is here, I think these are, this, this is not the whole list. Basically. This is the list of things that people feel has some promise. Okay? So that's why they are docking models. And there are hundreds of papers published on the wireless every year, and all of them are telling you know, how they are better than the rest of the previous knowledge. Right? So, so that's the idea is that, you know, and basically this was not known. These are all very, very new. All right, so we now understand two filters, band filter and the sub carrier filter, right? So then the next concept is NOMA, non-orthogonal multiple axis. So we had orthogonal before, and this is not orthogonal, okay? And somebody thought, why don't we, if we transmit two people at different power levels, and then by just by the power level, we know that this is for you or for you know, somebody else. So this is the idea, that this power is transmitting a red signal with a lower power level, same frequency, same time, okay? And a blue signal with a high power level. So the blue one has no problem. Blue one says, look, I am getting 10 watts and whatever number of watts and I, everything else is a noise and it can detect its signal, right? So the blue is happy. What about the red? Well, the idea for the red is that it will first try to listen to what blue has been given. So it will really listen to the high powered signal and then subtract that out to get what is what this but what is it for it? Uh, what is there for itself? Okay. <laughs> now, can you think about this? Is that you are given a signal which is mostly not yours, 
but you take out everybody else's signal just like they can take out, you can take out and then subtract it out. Okay. So users with poor channel get higher power. Poor channel means either they are far away or they are you know, somewhere where the noise is high. They, they need to get higher power. And the users with higher power decode their signal treating others as noise. They don't really worry about it, they just decode it. Users with lower power subtract the higher power signal before decoding. So they really have to decode the other one and then subtract it out. Can also be used with beam farming and MIMO. So this second example on the right in place how you can do with the beam farming and MIMO. If you have beam farming, these two bottom users, red and blue, are getting one signal which is beam farmed in their direction. And these two are getting the same frequency, same time, another beam farm signal which is in that direction. So now you can serve four people. I mean, as shown in this example, you can serve four people with the same frequency, same time, right? And these people, and basically the signals are different in direction and amplitude, right? In the same direction, the higher power is for the blue one, and the lower power is for the red one. So now they discover this one new dimension. There is space and time, uh, space and frequency, a time and frequency, whatever. And there was a space for my own. So we had a space, time, frequency, and now power. Fourth dimension. We are just trying to get more bits out of every hertz that we have. Okay. So can what do we mean by my own? Okay, so all right. So no more. Well, PDMA. Pattern division multiple access. Now this is just a slight variation in NOMA, then NOMA. Um, and um, and um, actually, I mean, um, maybe I, I won't be able to answer how it's very different, but basically in this case, what happens is that you get the signal, user one gets the signal, and it decodes its part, and then um, the so user n will have to do all of this. User n will take the user one's part, subtract it out, then user two's part, and then subtract it out, and then finally decode itself. Okay, user two will have to decode user one, and then get it itself, and user one has to decode itself, right? So this is basically pattern division multiple access, it is a special variation of NOMA. I think in NOMA we didn't probably have the transfer function, but I have to verify that. But basically what happens is you decode the signal and then you know the channel transfer function of UE1 and then you multiply that again and subtract it out. So this is the signal that is received from the air, this is the signal that you get, this pattern or whatever, and then you think that if I would transmit this, how much signal I get and subtract that out. This is even more complicated than normal. Okay, this is like PDMA. Again, you see this is October 2015. Just last <laughs> quarter or something, you know. These are all very, very new things. And lower density spreading. And uh, this is actually CDMA, variation of CDMA. You know, what is spreading, you know spread spectrum. What we did in CDMA was that we took one chip, one bit and made it 11 chips, you know, or something like that, right? And then we send 11 chips with some coding. Well, here what you do is you, you take a symbol and then you spread it, but not in bit, but on the subcarrier. So let's say I have some bits, I spread it, so I have two bits, I need 11 bits left, it, and then I put it on 11 subcarrier, right? You also take your bit and put it on the same 11 subcarrier at the same time, and so on and so forth. So what the receiver will get is a mixture of many different signals on one subcarrier, right? And 11 subcarriers and whatever, right? 
and then because everybody's code is different, it will be able to figure out that I really want code one, so you use CDMA to figure it out, what is your data. And so they are mixing up the OFDMA concept of subcarriers with the CDMA concept of spreading. Okay, so instead of having chips being transmitted as they are in team, they are transmitting the chips. They are transmitting on subcarriers, and that's where they, that's where they get mixed up. And then the subcarriers, um, and then it is called low density because. So what we do is low density is because um, we don't just pack them up completely. So I mean, we we cannot. So basically, most of the time, the other users are zero. Okay, so you don't have to work too hard to get user one or two or three or four. You know, they're not all happening at almost at the same time. You know, most of the time they're zero, and and so the signal that comes through is is very low density in you know kind of collision or you know, mix up, mix up. Okay, LDS. Any question about LDS? Basically, it's just, you have multiple carriers, just like in our DNA, but you have a spreading, you mapping, and whatever you have bits, is a larger number of Bit in, in different sub areas. Take that one step ahead, and that is called sparse code multiple access (SCMA). Again, combination of CDMA and OFDMA. Okay. Symbols are mapped to higher dimensional complex symbols, and then mapped to sub areas. So this is slightly different than the LDS. LDS is Little bit older now. This is even. I mean, this is basically SCMA is what they're doing is they're taking the thing and they're doing to higher dimensional complex symbols. Complex, you know, complex is like your X plus I Y is complex, right? And higher dimensional. So even though you might have just two bits, you will take it to something that has four complex numbers. So this is four dimensional complex symbols, right? And then you map those on the subcarriers. So basically, each person when they do this is spreading or coding or whatever you want to call it, they have a code book which has k dimensions. And I will show the example in the next slide. Which has k dimensions, and of which n dimensions are zero. In every code book, n dimensions are zero, but different code books will have different n rows. So basically, suppose you take Four dimension, and it's out of four dimension. We'll just use two zeros and two non-zeros. All right. So I will select row one and two. She may select row three and four, and she may select row five. You know, sorry, one and four. So different four books. Okay. But everybody has two zeros and four numbers. Four numbers out of which two are zero and two are none. Right. But their different positions will result in so much. So if you have k symbols and n zeros, you will have k c n four books. Right, everybody understand the KCN part combination. KCN, no, that notation have you seen that before? Huh? You have seen it. Some people have seen it. So basically, when you worry about combinations and permutations, then we talk about this is a combination. There is something called permutation, and so the formula for KCN is. Factorial k divided by factorial n times factorial k minus n. Sorry, factorial k k minus n. This is equal to it's always and also written as like this, and also written as n c k. So k c n. Now, has somebody seen like this notation? Okay. So this is the common notation, but I just couldn't write that in in my PowerPoint. So I just use this older notation. Right? That you see how many combinations are there when you need two rows out of four, six combinations like that. Okay. All right. So this is four books. So multi-dimensional. So k dimensions are spread over k symbols. So now we need k subcarriers. The codes are not orthogonal because now you have to use up all the codes. Generally, when you do is combination, if you do want to orthogonal, then only some numbers of them are orthogonal. Orthogonal means then when you multiply them, they will result in zero. 
And let's say if I selected row 1 and 4 to be 0, and so 2 and 3 are non zero, and she selects row 1 and 2 to be non zero, then row 3 is non zero and non zero. Product will not be non zero. Product will not be zero. So we are not orthogonal because we are in almost all possible combinations. Right? For orthogonal, we have to take only a small subset. So it's not orthogonal, but it is sparse. Why it is sparse? Because most of them are zero. Okay? And all codes in one code book are zero in the same location. So this is actually better understood by example. So I'm going to give you an example. I have two big symbols. And this is user one, and this is the code book for user one. It has two big symbols, B1 and B2, and the let's say the symbol that you want to transmit is one one. Right now, you understand. Now the code book has four entries zero 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 one one zero one one. So it will take the last entry for one one. Right? Now there are four in each entry there are four numbers, four complex numbers. But two of them are zero. Which them are zero? These two are zero. In all four entries, these two are zero for user one. Right? And these two are non zero or not zero, whatever. So this is the code book for user one. Because you are taking two symbols, two bits, that's why there's four of these vertical sets, right? And two of them are, and then basically in the col four columns here, and among the columns, the two rows are zero, which in this case are the last two rows. Okay? Second user has this code book, which has similar properties, but which are the zero, zero rows in here? Top two are zero, and this is zero zero, this is zero one one zero one one, and it is trying to transmit one zero, and therefore it will take the third column and transmit. Okay? The third user has this code book, and it has two zero rows, which are second and fourth. And then it has one zero to transmit, it will take the third column and transmit that part. These are all complex numbers, right? And so on and so forth. Six code books are possible because 4C2 is six. Can everybody calculate that 4C2? So there are six. So there are six code books and we are using all possible. So now we can support six users and four subcarriers. Right? And so what will happen is what you will see on the air is a mixture of all these six things here. This is how it will look like. This is the same time, same frequency, right? This is how it will look like. So this is called SCMA. Okay. Now, so the explanation is in the previous slide, and the example is on this slide. I think you should read, you know, both of them, then you'll understand. Because if you don't have the example, it becomes too difficult to understand. So this is like CDMA. So as a receiver, the code division multiplexing is exactly that. That what happens is the receiver has the code book. So the user one receiver or the destination or whatever, I mean basically has this code book. Right? So it will get this and then somehow do some multiplication with that and figure out you know, what is it for, for itself. Right? That was the CDMA. Okay. So so now you know, Top carrier is OFDMA and code book is CDMA. Right? So we are combining the past two known techniques, we are coming up with a third new technique. 